You're watching Fugitive Red Eye, and welcome to another episode of Media Opinions. Now, you may be asking yourself, weren't you gonna do one of those videos you put in your poll next? Well, here's the thing. I'm going to do those videos. But first off, my channel's technically not a democracy. I just do those polls to kind of gauge what people want. And secondly, I am going to do the one that wins the poll first, but I didn't say that was going to be my next video, now did I? Incidentally, it's probably going to be Rio versus Griffith, because that's got a pretty massive lead. But anyway, let's get into today's video and stop dawdling with shit that doesn't matter, yeah? So, theories, right? That's something I've dabbled with on the channel, right? As far as responding to bad cartoon theories as part of my Red Eye response series. In addition to that, you know, I've talked about things like death of the author and interpreting things in a way that the author may not have liked and things like that. Kind of like how I love Watchmen, but for the kind of the exact opposite reason than Alan Moore would want me to. Uh, and things like that, right? Like, I have my own interpretations of things to an extent, and I think we all kind of do. Hence, you know, the death of the author thing. And, uh, you know, I also kind of talked about the opposite of it, with the artist's vision, and, uh, how that's, like, the most important thing when it comes to making art and stuff like that. Uh, I've also been playing a lot of Y2K, which itself is a game that you gotta do a lot of theorizing, because, again, the story isn't spoon-fed to you, right? Like, the game itself is very metaphorical and cryptic with its story to, to an extent with its unconventional storytelling and so things like that do get gears turning in your head where you're trying to figure out what's going on so that said i'm not against theories wholesale there actually is some fun to be had in fan theories for instance one of my favorite fan theories is in the blair witch project the theory that the two guys lured the girl out into the woods there as an excuse to murder her and that there actually was no blair witch it was just those two guys messing with her and ultimately taking her life that's a very different way to interpret the movie than when i watched it the first time but i can't not think of that anytime i watch it now because it makes way more sense with the stuff that the guys do throughout the movie another example of a theory that i really like is the theory that star platinum is actually jonathan joe star now the only things to substantiate this are some ambiguous lines that jonathan said and the fact that star platinum and jonathan both do aura 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 but kind of differently than each other nevertheless i like to accept this one just because it makes makes it a very fitting conclusion to part three of JoJo if you imagine that Star Platinum is Jonathan. But, as there are good fan theories, there are also a lot, and I do mean a fucking lot, of terrible fan theories. For instance, there's the fan theory that Kara is the good guy in Undertale. I did a whole video on this fucking terrible theory, and, uh, it's fucking terrible. Every piece of dialogue in the game directly tells you the exact opposite, and people are like, no, 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 but it's criticizing you, the player. It's like, sure, in a meta sense, but that doesn't magically make the child who wanted to destroy the world and wanted to start a war with humans, which, by the way, people in my comments said, oh, she didn't want to start a war with humans, she wanted to end it. Then why the fuck did Asriel say that it would have started a war with humanity? Why did Asriel say that if that wasn't the case? Not to mention, you think that wiping out the rest of humanity is somehow a preferable alternative? You think that that somehow makes it less bad? God, people are fucking stupid when it comes to that. Or, like, when people think that Satan is the actual good guy in Devilman. There's so many things where people are like, well, the villain is actually the good guy. And, like, look, I'm all for death of the author and I'm all for interpretation, but sometimes you're just pulling shit that just isn't there and can't by any reasonable metric be gleaned. Like, there is nothing that would lead you to believe that, Ki that Kara is a good guy. There is nothing that would lead you to believe that Satan is the good guy in Devilman. He's a sympathetic villain. But that doesn't make him the good guy. That doesn't make God the villain. God is the villain in some of the sequels, sure. I'll concede that. God is the villain in Demon Lord Dante, absolutely. But Demon Lord Dante's kind of shit. <laughs> like, uh, that's a hot take, maybe. But Demon Lord Dante is kind of shit. Like, um, I like the anime... And the manga's good, too, to an extent, but the ending is fucking terrible, and I hate it. Like, the ending to Demon Lord Dante. Like, the entire second half of Demon Lord Dante is kind of stupid. Not to mention, the time when God is depicted as a villain in Devilman Lady is, like, the worst written chapter, and it literally happens in a matter of seconds. 
where Satan shows up, says, hey, help me fight God, and then Devil Man's just like, yeah, okay, let's fight God. With no reason. Like, given the ending of Devil Man, which I'm doing very carefully not to spoil here, because I usually pretty openly spoil it, uh, Devil Man would have no reason to help Satan. If anything, he would want to fucking kill him right then and there, given the ending of Devil Man. So it just makes no sense that he would immediately just be like, yeah, yeah, let's let's go fight God. Which I know I bitch about the ending to Devil Man Lady all the time, but it's so fucking stupid. But anyway, that's a whole tangent. Let's actually get back to the theories. One type of theory that I absolutely hate that happens all the time is the it was all a coma, it was all a dream, it was all a hallucination, or they're all in purgatory type theory. Now granted, the purgatory and coma dream are a little different, but functionally they're kind of the same. Uh, a lot of the times with the purgatory one, you'll get shit that's really fucking reaching, like the Ed, Ed, and Eddie theory, where they're like, oh, Kevin must have died in a bike crash because he's always with his bike. Never mind the fact that he's literally not always with his bike, and in fact, he's probably depicted more without his bike than he is with it. I can't confirm that, but I can honestly think of tons of episodes where his bike is never fucking shown. Then they just take surface-level traits of each of the Ed and Nettie characters and try to say, oh, well, they actually died in this time period because of this. And again, all of them are really reaching. It's like, Eddie's greedy, therefore he died in the Great Depression. Like... What level of fucking reach do you have to get to get there? Another one is, like, the Rugrats theory, right? Where it says, oh, the Rugrats are figments of Angelica's imagination. Which, first off, no. Angelica wasn't even in the pilot episode. And there's several episodes where Angelica isn't there. Susie talks to the babies, too. The parents interact with their children all the time. Maybe they can't see and hear them talk, and you could argue that's the hallucination. But Susie can! Not to mention you bring up all grown up, and that just throws a wrench in that whole thing. Also, like, the Rugrats theory comes up with ways that, like, the babies died, too, where they're like, Tommy was stillborn. Chucky died with his mom. Then how do you explain the fact that the parents interact with and parent their babies all the time? Like, what the fuck? Like, I know that they're absent and shit like that a lot of the time. Like, they'll just leave them and then the babies go on adventures. But there's plenty of scenes with the parents interacting with their children. And then there's one part of the Rugrats theory where they're like, everyone just pre pretends that Chucky is still alive. Uh, to make Chaz feel better, and that Chaz is nervous because of Chucky's death. And, like, none of this shit makes any fucking sense. They just pull shit out their ass, and it drives me up the fucking wall. A lot of those theory videos that I saw just clearly hadn't even watched the show. Like, when they tried to say that Rocco's neighbor in Rocco's Modern Life was a pedophile because she tried to seduce him. You know Rocco's an adult, right? Like, none of this shit makes any sense. Like, people who make cartoon theories are some of the dumbest fucking people online. So yeah, theories are fun. I like theorizing. There's some things that are clearly meant for you to try and theorize and figure out. Like I said, Yik is one of those things where part of the point of the game is to try and figure out what's actually going on. And you know, there's things like Serial Experiments Lane that are of a similar thing where you're trying to figure out the actual plot of what's actually happening. There's a lot of fun avant-garde stuff out there, and there's a lot of fun theories you can make about things. Like I said, I have plenty of my own theories that I come up with or that I accept. But that doesn't mean that theories in and of themselves are good. In fact, I'd say that overwhelmingly theories are bad. Uh, that said, I don't think that they're wholesale bad either, and there's plenty of fun theories. So it is kind of a mixed bag. But the point is, you gotta wade through a lot of shit before you get to the good stuff. Subscribe, the Fiji to Red Eye.